talk about the history of ARP Texas, that it used to be called Strawberry Texas. Okay. So, um, strawberry, we were only strawberry for one year. Um, but prior to that, we were Jarvis Switch. In 1872 is when we became Jarvis Switch. And then in 1898, we were strawberry. And in 1899, we became ARP. So we've been ARP now for 125 years. Yes, so can, I, can you kind of elaborate more on this Jarvis switch for people who don't know what that means? John and Eliza Sarton came over, it was 1868-ish mm -hmm. when they came over here and, and started the community and bought the land from Mr. Moore. And in 1872, um, that's when it was named Jarvis Switch. And when the International Northern Great Railroad came through, um, it was, they, they named towns Switch and Junction and things, so. So after that, then it became Strawberry for only one year because why, why Strawberry? Well, the land here in ARP is great soil, great fertile soil, and uh, they found that it was great agricultural-wise. We grew fruits and vegetables, and we shipped using the railroad to the northern markets, and so Strawberry was one of them, so we we were named Strawberry. It's just interesting to me that it was only just one year named Strawberry and the only one crop, but that's how y'all started the festival? Yes. How did that kind of come about? Years ago, and I'm not sure of the year, but um, they held a Strawberry Festival for years and years and years, and then it kind of went dormant, mm -hmm. and we did a, a reboot, so to speak. Uh, our first year was supposed to be 2020. However, COVID uh, shut us down that year, but we came back with more power and ready to go and gusto on 2021. And so this is our fourth year for the reboot of the Strawberry Festival. Um, and we're just celebrating that ARP is ARP for 125 years and made it two days. God willing that the rain hold off uh, for Sunday. So it will be two days, but um, it is. It, we, we just celebrate our history, history and our heritage. And um, this, this festival is all about having fun and coming together as a community and enjoying each other. I do remember as a kid living here in ARP, I remember the Strawberry Festival and I had such fond memories of the festival that uh, when I was asked to do some of the events here in ARP, that was one I knew I was gonna bring back because of the memories that I held with it. How has this event economically impacted the city, would you say? I, I would say very well. Um, our our town has not seen so many people <laughs> in one day um, and so we all of our local businesses definitely benefit from it um, our local uh, vendors they benefit from it a lot of people have those side hustles that they work jobs out of their home and uh, you know artisans that you know crafts and um, styles have gone out you know crocheting and macrame and um, making beautiful homemade baskets and things have just uh, disappeared from our culture and um, it's such an art form that they are able to come and share it with the community and it's it's unique one of a kind unique items that people can see here at the festival so it's uh, it helps our, our local um, home businesses as well as our local storefront businesses here okay do you know how many people come out to this festival like how much your population hundreds Oh, hundreds? <laughs> hundreds and hundreds, yes. Uh, last okay. year, I think we saw around 800 uh, that, that came in and out, you know, all throughout the day. Um, our population is only about a thousand, so I would say we are real close to hitting that with in one day of matching it. And so, okay. um, yeah, we, we usually have about 800 to a thousand people come through and see what it's all about. Sure, and it's going to be here on this land right here. And yes. Will it be further down in the, the Main Street City? No, we try to we try to keep us all compacted right here, so it's not as far to walk for our patrons. Um, so it's all just right here in this little acre and a half. Got it. And yeah, what else can people expect uh, to see and do this year? Well, we have uh, lots of free activities for the kids. Uh, we do have Mr. Tony's Trains, which the kids absolutely love. Um, we have First Baptist Church of Omen that is coming and bringing a bunch of free activities for the children. We have the Mechanical Bull. We have an axe trailer. We have um, a balloon artist and face painters. We have a gentleman coming making homemade ice cream um, like they did back early 1900s so um, it's going to be a real neat event a lot of things for the kids a lot of things for the parents we have food trucks and food vendors so it it we have a little bit of something for everyone